Kay Welcome at FOSDEM 2016 here in Janson. In the main welcome Alexandra Bokoboy. He will tell us something about free IPA if you want, enterprise desktop at home, your bed, set up. And I think as we've got our high noon 12, we should begin. Yeah. Welcome. Browsers. 
And also, last but not least, is the private data that they have. My data that I store on my servers or somewhere else, encrypted, fetched, resolved by somebody. Um, it also has to be usable for me regardless of which kind of identity I have at the current situation. So I work on the ABA. It's a project that tries to manage identities and policies in, in general sphere. Uh, they are stored centrally in the uh, ABA uh, lab server. They are applied locally by the software uh, running on your desktop and typical environment in Fedora or that have enterprise Linux or centers of data or Ubuntu. It's uh, SSSD uh, daemon. And uh, it's used fairly well across the uh, commercial customers of Red Hat and others. But it's also used by other free software projects. And uh, one of the uh, bigger publicized ones is the uh, uh, non foundation, so non project is using actually a uh, free IP to manage a whole uh, non account environment. So, if you're non contributor, chances are that you're already using a uh, free IP. Um, so, how we can define the enterprisesness of, of, uh, of the desktop? So, let's score by a passport. A typical enterprise environment always talks about single sign-on. So on, on, on this front, uh, if, if we talk about a reboot, which happens sometimes, right? Uh, so the typical workflow on the reboot of a laptop is that I have to log in into the system with most likely a, a local account. Then I jump onto the private virtual network and enter another passport, I obtain, with entering that password, I might be required to enter some additional uh, factors or authentication, like the additional token values. Uh, then I obtain a typical corporate Kerberos uh, credentials. And then I use the um, Regardless where I am, 
if I have an internet access, I can be in my environment in entering credentials once and then joining the VPN uh, with those credentials. I did not mean to enter like, four times or even two times. This is already an improvement, right? So the, the part of what allowed me to do is that the system is configured as applying to my personal free IP deployment, which is somewhere in the data center, uh, but it could be at my home if I would be more careful about my own name and ran my own three system provider. Um, then, as this is the uh, demon of this machine, handles logging and characters keys, as this is the actual notices that we are using a proxy for Kerberos and we are using it over the public internet. And Kerberos was actually created to be used over um, public networks, not secure um, for other means. And then I established a VPN connection based on this Kerberos key. So we will go into details of it, but the credentials were entered just once. <coughs> So this Kerberos proxy is a thing that was developed as a part of um, a problem that Microsoft needed to be needed to solve in 2007 uh, with the Active Directory. So they created something that has this software name for the protocol MSKKBC P, uh, which is basically a remote uh, Kerberos access without being on, uh, in, on the internal. It's transparent for Kerberos library uh, users since uh, Kerberos 1.13 uh, for those who use empty Kerberos. And the only thing you need to have is basically a string that says that your KDC is at HTTPS something in your this thing. Then it turns the data over HTTPS Yes, and uh, you can do it in such a way that the proxy can distribute traffic to multiple Kerberos realms behind the this gateway, this proxy. So you can, for example, have a gateway based on free and then you can have a whole set of active directory environments that are there. And new people will be using active directory credentials instead of IP credentials. That's already in. in Red Hat Enterprise in 72. <coughs> and GNOME Project F is enabled for SSH users instead of SSH publishers. Uh, they, they, they can use Kerberos to log in and they have a single site on for 24 hours. SSSD will then automatically extend the ticket for more time. <coughs> On the VPN side, there is only one VPN currently that uh, VPN software that supports the uh, proxy. It's the oh, actual not proxy, the, the GSS API initiation. That's Open Connect. So, in order to enter to and beyond works out of the box, Open VPN doesn't work with GSS API credentials, and people ask it for better part of this decade. Uh, for providing that. Unfortunately, uh, developers of OpenVPN thought that uh, using certificates is a better solution, uh, probably not really understanding the actual use case. But uh, I hope there's something about to happen and uh, do the change. And the other problem is that if you're obtaining a certain ticket, uh, the ticket only says that your identity is very far. But it doesn't say how hard was the uh, information that, that you used to verify yourself. Did you provide a passport physically? Did you provide uh, multiple factors for authentication? Or you just provide a passport? Did, did somebody school for it? So uh, with the um, Kerberos 114, we have basic implementation of so-called uh, authentication indicators where um, a plugin that handles authentication can say how this authentication happens. So, for example, if I updated my 
times if you use it uh, multiple factors. The plugin within the Kerberos server can say that this ticket was obtained using a copy in addition to the password. So it, it presents like a stronger guarantee that it's the same. And in FreeMD4, we support natively um, multi factor authentication, so it works with FTP, it works with FreeOTP on Android and iOS and Google Authenticator applications. And all, all HTF, OTP, and TOT become possible things. Um, it's enforced in Kerberos, um, so you log into Kerberos, and if you, set, if you have in your account, you have the um, token associated with your Kerberos credentials, you will not be able to log in just with the password. You have to provide the token. So it's kind of provides you a bit of assurance on um, how, how this system was authenticated. And you can use it's available. Uh, this is a screenshot from the uh, Google Play Store. But I will do a demo of interactive mobile using the um, UBP. So what I will do right now is that I will program this UBP associated with my identity. And you will see what happens next. Let me just the reason I'm doing this in the common line uh, in the console now because I do not program USB devices from the browser. So I here have the common line to RP and it has a common quantity token dash F. And the program you became in a special point like this. So let me take a first floor in this. So I created, I programmed the token here uh, against my server somewhere in the cloud. Uh, I used my actual Gerber's credentials, the ticket that I obtained when I logged into the machine to authenticate against the uh, uh, server and the token was associated with my identity you can see the other screen here that says that it's me the, exactly because I, I was authenticated by my Gerber's uh, principle so now if I do again log the screen one subtle thing happened here. The prompt that you see there says not a password, it says a factor, first factor, which is a password, but it hints the user that there might be more. After entering the first password, uh, it, first factor, it asks me for, for the next one. And I actually can configure as admin, I can configure that this user can only use multi factor authentication to log in, not skip this step. So let me enter. And I go back. And actually, at the point when I go back, I got a new. Ticket drives and tickets. So, uh, SSSD authenticated with my token and generated me a new ticket drives and ticket. On, on, on the big, uh, way on this basis, I will be updating all the other tickets. So, so far, so good. So, what I have now is I got one time password token to the physical hardware UBT and I added it associated with myself in my creative environment. Then, as it is being handled for me, and it notices that the Kerberos server say I need more data, and pass it through this information, through the time step, to the actual application, in this case it's GDM. But it would work exactly the same for any other single application that uses the same time step. The login, again, verifiable and public network using the same proxy protocol. 
Well, in this case, we don't have this dynamic switching. I'm, on, I'm actually on VPN, right? So I, I could have switched to the internal um, internal view of the uh, KDC, right? But I'm not. I'm also using this public network. So we can improve that. And then I get the ticket. The first factor is then provided first to the union uh, for unlocking the non passwords. Because if I provide the cool uh, password class and token value, I on the first one onto the machine when the uh, GNOME password and key storage is created, then I effectively wouldn't be able to unlock it on the next one because the token will change this side. So it, it took some time to separate these problems and get a bit of smart logic to, to handle this. Again, credentials were entered just once, one screen, and then we can use or derive some facts about this authentication uh, based on, on this fact. <coughs> so what we can derive? The obvious part of it is actually we can authenticate against almost anything. And one single thing is uh, I already authenticated against my uh, identity server, my VIPA server, to get the access to the system. <laughs> if I wouldn't have any access, SSSD would actually cache uh, an encrypted hash of my password locally without the token. It would still allow me to log on when I would be, for example, on a plane without access to the internet. But it wouldn't ask me for the second part. I can obtain some sound assertion for other web services. That's already enterprise opinion. But uh, I will show you how this works. Um, I can access file, uh, network file systems like SIFS, SMB, uh, and NFS4 using that ticket already if I have this configured to environment. Again, for those, I, I don't need to enter my credentials. As if it's a miracle, but it's a normal thing that should happen. And I obviously can display properties of the tickets that I obtain. It's not working yet well, and I will show how it's not working. But I also can renew the ticket. Typically, the ticket is issued for some time. For example, in Red Hat, it's issued for 10 hours. And then you have to obtain a new one to renew the old one. VIP issues it for 24 hours and you can configure it for the renewal and SSD can handle the renewal. And with the um, <coughs> recent purpose, you actually can have multiple principles in use, multiple credentials storages in use at the same time. You can be an admin, you can be a me, you can be somebody else from a different realm the same time in the same way of session. It's a bit awkward how to use it right now, but that's exactly because we don't have this uh, user experience uh, cleared and uh, improved. So let's authenticate the APIs. Epifine is a known web browser. I will do it with just an Epifine here and I will talk about the other parts, but uh, Practically, uh, um, if you take the Dora 23 or any other release uh, since 2009, um, the JSS support, JSS API support is not there because it was removed in Lipsol after refactoring. And there is a bug open since 2009 that asks for adding this support. And it's, it's still not there. Uh, WebKit GTK is not usable because it's usable. So, so Epifine is not usable with the Kerberos. So for example, you cannot log in into Google applications with, with this one. And that's pretty sort of state. So this was the state when I presented this to non-developers in August at the Google the, the annual conference. And we started from there, and we got to the point that we have some patches that implement GSS API and DeepSoft and allow us 
to proceed up to the application web in 25 years of web browser. So Thomas Coppola uh, from Red Hat and David Woodhouse from New York were mostly fixed. It's, uh, it has some bugs, but they, they can be weeded out. So for the basic purpose scenario, things are working pretty well. This laptop promise is built. And let me get into an MP5. So this is the Chrome browser. And I will try to walk it into free IPA. Make it wide. <coughs> I did not need to enter any passwords. And if we look here, we actually have an opportunity for the HTTP uh, principle on the uh, free IPA server. That ticket was asked for and obtained by the uh, browser. In this case, in the editor browser. So this is my, I'm not an admin. So I see only the part that I'm supposed to see as a user. But you can see that I have some certificate associated with myself. And you can see that I'm a member of certain groups and things. And if I look out of here and log in as admin, this will be just a normal login. And I will see much more. See the cool IPA stuff. You actually can play with this if you go to demo.freeIPA.org. You will get the uh, spray field environment that updates itself every uh, 24 hours. And you can uh, join your own system to that environment. And you can play and create some, some stuff there. But uh, what happened is that. Again, no credentials were entered twice to, to get into the app application. In this case, it's a user application, but nevertheless, it's, it's different. But we go to, to get this into the next known stable known release uh, at, at some point. Uh, we want to publish it and improve, uh, but it already represents a, a, a huge jump in the productivity. Um, so of course, the single sign-on is the primary feature. It reduces the amount of interactions that you have to do. Um, then you can do the automated credentials thing. Because if you have credentials and you can renew them, then you can roll on and roll on and do this for uh, some external services. Um, can we get a mic? Let's go 
important tools is important because you have at least at some point have to pop up the window to the user to say that okay, I need more, more information. And also this gives us ability to uh, get away and don't store locally any passwords or credentials so you can create secure environments and actually prove that they are more secure than the typical keyloss uh, type of uh, environment. <coughs> then you can visualize what happens. What, what happens if you have all these things? So let's go into the um, normal line accounts. You can see that I actually have three Kerberos tickets. Um, I have one that is valid and working, and two that has no credentials, they expired. If no one notices them, but I cannot see them on the common line because uh, they are not there. Other than that, this, this window is pretty useless. It doesn't even say which credentials we are dealing with, how, how the purpose principle is called. Uh, I know that this one, uh, the first one, is my principle because I logged in with it. But what the hell is this? It's about the same like this one. The same real, but I don't have any principle names. Okay. So this is something that uh, would probably really be very easy to fix. And it also says that whoever developed this had no experience because there was no way to test it, no way to play with it. Now we have some way, so we can improve, and that's good. Uh, now let's let's do some interesting stuff. Um, <coughs> I'll do login into Red Hat, which is not using the Kerberos platform, yet, but it's using Kerberos inside. So I'll do login. Switch them, but uh, in the UI, we do not. Perfect. 
and then you can review it. And for the uh, multi-factor principles, renewal requires interaction with the user, so interaction with this code, which is piece of hardware, and you think of how to implement it. Um, in the other browsers, the, um, things generally work, but they are hard. So, for example, in Firefox, you have to do manually um, set options in about, uh, about config, um, saying that yes, please negotiate with the tickets against the uh, domains that, that are there. This actually prevents using Kerberos as a public service against um, something, some other super well-known providers. If they would start providing it, everybody would need to change the browser configuration, which is wrong. So what we have tried to do is we have some uh, RFC for defining the data in the DNS section, um, in the DNS zone that says where, where we can find information about Kerberos. You, you, typically you can find some, but you cannot find, for example, information about people's reports because that's a URL, not just the post name, and the other parts are missing. And if you want to trust the information from DNS, you also need to have DNS sex support on, uh, on both client and the server, so that you actually believe that you've got often authoritative answer to that. <coughs> um, we used to provide a plugin that automates the configuration of uh, Firefox. But Firefox actually brought external extensions um, since version 43. They decided that the extensions provided by somebody else cannot be installed anymore, regardless how they sign it, only if they come from the central location, from so-called AMI uh, place from, from which must be operate. Um, that uh, extension can be trusted and so they, they are fighting against spam and uh, a lot of uh, viral extensions that are trying to take take away the data. But it also complicates the work for uh, some like uh, zero configuration of the common space. <coughs> the, the extension itself was generated locally by the create a server in the source of campaigns information about your realm, about your uh, certificate authority so that it can be trusted and propagated automatically. And of course you can do the configuration yourself. In Chromium on Chrome, Chrome on um, Windows actually respects the Internet Explorer settings for, for this. So if you have a Windows machine enrolled into the Active Directory and you enable single sign-on Internet Explorer settings, Chrome will respect them. Unfortunately, Chrome has problem with the uh, processing of, of GSS API, which is uh, 3W authenticate, negotiate type. Um, if credentials are not available, it pops up your window to, to enter the username and password and do NTLM and SSP authentication, even if you don't, if your server don't have it support that at all. And that confuses a lot. Um, but on Linux it's even more confusing. There is no settings in the UI where you can specify, unlike in Firefox, you can specify them even for manually. Um, on Linux and Mac OS, you have to do it in the command line every time you start Chrome and Chrome. You have to say that my real is this, my uh, allowing the names to operate like this and that, and it's really not user-friendly, let's just say. Uh, so with the um, fixes in LeapSolv and WebKit GTK, what we got is, we always use GSS API, the server advertises um, negotiate authentication uh, over HTTPS. The reason we can safely do this is before, it, it, the Kerberos protocol is built in such a way that you never authenticate to the third party. You authenticate to your Kerberos distribution center. 
So you ask the Berkowitz distribution center, give me a ticket to that third party. And that means that the Kerberos distribution center has to know that third party. If you ask a PDC and PDC say I cannot give you a ticket, it means that most likely it doesn't know about that party. So the third party server, the web server, doesn't even get the response back with your Kerberos credentials. Nothing leaked there. There is one problem because your KDC actually knows that you tried to access that website, however malicious or illegal that was, uh, which required to ask for the uh, for the purpose. So it's a it's a sort of a leak of your actions. Kerberos has protection against this called anonymous um, principles. So you can be you can claim that you are anonymous. Request certain operations, verify that they happen, uh, that ticket can be obtained to the third party, and then switch back to the normal identity and use it to receive uh, a ticket again. So after the user confirms that yes, he wants this to be done, like we do already for saving passports, like we ask, we, we ask the user, do you want to save this passport for the next step? And the problem with Kerberos and browsers, and this is the big problem, is that the uh, JSS API is synchronous. So until you get the whole sequence finished, your browser will stay. And if browser has a single UI for all browser tabs, the all tabs will be on. And so it's not a good user experience. And regardless of purpose, this uh, user experience is always bad. And it was bad in like um, six or seven years ago when we worked in uh, Nokia on um, MIMO browsers, trying to create something that you can use on the mobile. And internet was much slower at that time. So even the response from the server when you try to authenticate or you try to uh, resolve DNS record, which, which also was at that point uh, done synchronously. You could lock up your browser, so you will see it really bad the user experience. This is still a major issue. There's still some problems that need to be solved in all browsers. So what, what practical use of all, all of this? This is nice for the um, Enterprise environment, what, what practical value we can extract from it other than logging into the uh, administrative interface of the API server? Well, a practical, let me do a practical um, thing here. So I have a setup of own cloud to which I hacked in a subword of uh, JSS API. I did not add JSS API support myself into all the cloud. Instead, I use something called Ipsum, which provides an aggregation of uh, different authentication methods, including some. And what happened is I tried to log into own cloud, my own cloud install. It so that I happened to be a location on the own server that is protected by um, by credentials they have to be in Kerberos credentials. And that redirects me to the Ipsum. Ipsum takes my Kerberos credentials and generates me some assertion that uh, my own cloud takes, parses it, and sets up the configuration. Um, this is all cloud. A2, uh, a community edition, it doesn't have this support. Uh, on cloud sells this feature in the enterprise um, version of the app. So if effectively, I really think that the enterprise version of on cloud in 10 months, of course. Well, not the whole enterprise edition, of course, but commodizing the, uh, the, this kind of features is, is probably a good thing. Um, Yeah. 
So, if I don't have need to enter credentials, then I, I simply can use them, use this session without, without creating problems to myself, or yeah, as I grow in and become older, my brain will fall on, on using those technologies. So using it once per session is probably better, unless I, I would be a paranoid and set up myself to use it every single time. But um, effectively, this is uh, stretching your own itch for, for becoming more comfortable with the country. Uh, and this is the, the real on cloud. So, in fact, it has the uh, editor that contains all. Content, uh, content of my presentation so I can, I can work on it and I can share it with some guys. So this is not a more This is what I think. Um, okay, credentials for entering months. So it's kind of a, a rhyme in this presentation, but I guess it's a good one. Yeah. So, Unfortunately, I cannot use the same get in the ignore online accounts. So if I want to go here in the settings and add, add an on-cloud account so that I, I get synchronization started working, you, you see it asks me for the password. And even if I enter all the uh, details here, It's still asking for the password, so I cannot even proceed. But this is something that can be fixed because exactly the same framework is used for logging into Google's and at least with uh, Red Hat Kerberos setup, corporate setup, which I hope I will get at some point. Working maybe. Maybe not. Um, you can you can actually use it to to um, log in into the uh, Google stuff. So one thing I would try to do right now is I have actually the uh, video of that, but it's a bit weird uh, aspect ratio. That actually allows to log in using my Kerberos credential into Google. You see, I, I did not enter my password at all. It used my Kerberos. And now in my desktop, I have access to all the, um, all the services that Google provides to me. And if I take the browser, Drive, Google Drive. Again, I, I don't enter the password. The thing goes into the uh, Red Hat integration with Google, and then I log in with the Kerberos credentials. And there's also there's a message. Uh, there's a message below that says that. You're running outdated web browser does not provide the features that Google apps require. So to fix this problem, right now you have to have a separate point for a normal password-based authentication. Now the other part is that with FreeAPA 4.2 we have a full featured uh, support for certificates. Uh, we have certificate support for hosts and services like web servers and, and whatnot uh, since the early time, like maybe five years ago. Uh, but now we have support for user certificates and actually for uh, different profiles. So you can create a certificate according to your own profile. Uh, you can use that for storing uh, separate credentials on the server, provisioning them to different machines using different 
credentials again and uh, use a vault to store and retrieve this data. And the certificates also can come from the smart cards and SSSD is the reason for this. It's all working with the authentic uh, can use authentication from the smart card, whether it's your government or ID or it's just a unity neo which includes the uh, smart card functionality. So how enterprise our home will become? Well, of course, what you get from these enterprises now is the home of your own infrastructure. That's for current noise uh, five years ago for saving people today. You improve user experience your, for your family, for yourself, for your colleagues, if you are in your own business. <coughs> Uh, or your non-government organization and local interactions. And you profit with it. And your profit might not come in, uh, as, a, as a certain bag of money, but certainly in COVID, uh, you know, most time that you spent on authenticating and authenticating, you have spent finding something more uh, angry to the world. So thank you for and I'm happy to answer any questions whether now if we have some time surprisingly and uh, I'll be here for the whole time. Yeah maybe you can question him directly here because we have to continue at 300 with um, other talk. So we would like to say thank you for the talk.